back to Stitch Files with Barrett in America. Episode 13. 13. Yep. I just looked Definitely. it up and I forgot it. Definitely. Yeah, so I, I was right. Okay. We're all back together. Yes. Yay. Sarah's here. As Sarah's healed. Be. Yeah, that's right. We miss, we miss Sarah. Yeah. We talked about her. Are you feeling great? I'm feeling pretty great. Okay. You had the cooties, right? Yeah. A bad case of the Bad cooties. case of the cooties. Yeah, it's and bad. it's good that the cooties left her. And hopefully went to someone else. They no, did. No, not someone else. Well, no, they, they did go to someone else, yeah. didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think several people. Yeah. <laughs> Them, several cooties, people got they, cooties. They get around, I'm telling you. You've been cootied. <laughs> <They really do. laughs> All right. So today we're going to talk about, we're going to do a quick recap of two shows that have occurred. Long Beach Impressions Expo and the Northeast Expo. Yes. 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 Well I got done. confirmation that I got this correct. Let's, uh, I think some introductions are in order. Not really. If you don't know us by now, no, where you been? No, there may be some new people. All right. Go ahead. I'm Bob. Brandon. Sarah. Sarah. Moving on. <laughs> I just, it just, I like. You uh, like that part I of like it? I like order. Okay. I do. I don't want anyone to mistake you for me. They that do on the phone. horrible. Yes. I was just talking to my mother. She kept saying, that's Brandon. Mm-hmm. And I said, no, it's your son. She said, well, you sound like Brandon. I said, people say that. Yeah. And then I was talking to her. She said, is Brandon there with you? I was. I was here. Yeah. Well, I'd, while you were gone, many people called. Phil Hooks is one. And I, I let him on. I, I okayed some deals for him. That <laughs> you'll find I, out can't about to, I can't wait to three see months. those. I can't wait to <laughs> see those. <laughs> All right. Let's give a shout out to some people. Yes. George down in Florida. Mm-hmm. Saw him. Yep. Saw him uh, in Long Beach. He he watches. Um, he also said, "No more flashing lights," which yeah. that was an anomaly. And somehow, the okay. Wi-Fi works. So yeah. there you go, George. That's I for you, buddy. George. He was he was really disappointed in the flashing lights. I was too. Sorry. When I went back and watched it, I, I think there should have been an epilepsy warning on the video. Yeah. Could have been because it was weird, but they're fixed. Yeah, I felt like I was in a police car. You've been there not before. Not that I've ever been in one. <laughs> I just, that's what I imagined the police car would feel like with the flashing blue lights. I can tell you from experience, it's similar. Yeah. Shout out also to... Tammy. Tammy. Mm-hmm. Tammy. Of Tammy. Orange Moon Boutique. Uh, she saw us in Long Beach, as did mm-hmm. George. Um, yeah. Where's she, where is she located? I saw her comment on the... She's in California, but I'm not sure the city. Okay, cool. I think she's I can't been remember a either. Maybe it was while. Chino. I can't remember. I remember seeing seeing where she was, but uh, yeah. Thanks for the nice comment. I'm sorry I couldn't be there. Very nice comments, yeah, and uh, nice. we are so appreciative. I'll meet you one day, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. If I ever get out of the cubicle, and I'm, I'm going to give a shout out to uh, a new Barrett and customer. His name is Bob. He's down in South Carolina. Was a neighbor of my brother. We found out talking on the phone. Super nice guy. Very excited to join the Baird and family. So shout out Bob. Hey, Not Bob. you. He calls you Bobbin, by the way. Bobbin. Yeah. <laughs> well, he has been watching from yeah, the beginning. That's what he, he said. If you called me Bobbin. Yep. Yeah. I don't he know said, if I like Bob or not. He's already calling me names. No, he's Just great. kidding. Great guy. Glad to have you soon. Hopefully soon. <laughs> in <laughs> four crossed. months in the Baird and family. Yeah. Um, now we we appreciate everybody. Everybody that listens and watches. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Um, so recap. Let's do um, Long Beach first. Yes. I wasn't there, so. You guys have the floor. Okay. Do well, you want to ask us anything about it? Um, how was it? Th- how was the concession stand? Did you go? I did. <laughs> I, did. I don't. You know I, I don't did. really care. Uh, yeah. No. They had a veggie burger, which I really appreciated. I like a good veggie burger. Most of them was, aren't good. It was just okay, but I appreciated. Was it most of it's like, was it like sixty dollars? <laughs> it was. Yeah. Most of it's like uh, here's a Morning Star burger heated up in the microwave. Enjoy. Pretty, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. No, but it was good attendance, right? Didn't you? I was Friday was wild. Very, very surprised because I think going into it, you and I talked about there's nobody coming. And oh yeah, it was hit or miss that even that week going up. Like, it, is it even happening? You know? Yeah. I, I was surprised they had it, but once they did have it, it was the right thing. I, I, I think. I mean, yeah. we 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 had a ton of people on the booth on Friday. I mean. I never left the booth, not one time on Friday. Yeah, Friday was so busy. And Saturday was was very good. Sunday was so-so. Yeah, wasn't Sunday great. was pretty 
quiet. But we still wrote some orders on Sunday. So Gary had a really good show. Um, Thomas Cena, who is normally at that show, did not make it. He wasn't sick. Um, he had something else he had to do and couldn't make it to the show. Unfortunately, Kent from Dane Sewing had the cooties. He did. He couldn't make it. Um, I talked to him on Thursday. Yeah, it was Thursday, and he just kept apologizing. I'm like, buddy, you're sick. I mean, don't apologize. I just just get better. That's the main yeah. thing. So, <clears throat> but, yeah, we had a skeleton crew, kind of, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we did. We even had old Thaddeus doing some selling. Yes. Oh, boy. Yes. <laughs> if Thaddeus can do some selling, anybody there's hope. Spend. There's hope for anybody. No, he's uh, he's very intelligent. No, yeah, Thad, 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 Thaddeus knows I love him. Yeah. But yeah, it was all hands on deck. Everybody, roll up your sleeves. Well, eat you could have said, "Hey, you mind catching a flight out here?" I'd have been like, "I'll see you there." We had it. We could have yeah, used another person or two, though, probably. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm sure there were people yeah. who we didn't get to talk to, and we always apologize for that. All, all I can say is, you know, please be understanding. But um, yeah, it was. It was I got to. Uh, I watched you guys um, on the on a live stream. Did I tell you that? So you were just peeping in. Yeah. You were just sure all working. Huh? Spirit. Oh, funny story. The lady who brought you this fancy product, mm -hmm. she did some live streaming, and I saw your booth. Uh, oh, good. Yeah, a bunch of people. It was cool. I saw people on roller skates. Did you guys see them? Yes. Yeah. I did not. Yes. Yeah, they're like spinning out of control in the middle of the booth, or the middle of the that's what you Four. should do in Atlantic City. I would be happy to. Oh, there was no carpet there, which was very strange. I mean, I know there wasn't any carpet. No, <laughs> Breaking it, news. Yeah, it was. <laughs> there was no, no carpet. <laughs> there was no carpet. I mean, it was weird. I've done Where'd this show carpet? for 27, 28 years, and it's always, I mean, they carpet everything. It's really nice. I mean, tons and tons of booths, booths there, but a lot of empty space. What would you say? A quarter of the people weren't there, maybe a third of the booths? Yeah, maybe a third. I mean, there's a lot of space between booths. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people had canceled. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I could see where they'd have to since we had people that were sick up to the day yeah. and during, you know. But I thought it was good. Good attendance. Yeah, and, th you know, they had they had protocols in place, which yeah. I, I fully agree with. Uh, they had some testing there right there on the spot. Um, That's so, good. Yeah, it, it was good. And it was kind of the same thing with the Atlantic City show last year where it felt like you had enough time to talk to the people mm -hmm. that were there instead of feeling like you have to juggle everyone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's um, – because it – I don't know. Atlantic City was a – I felt like there was no downtime. So it is nice, I guess. That, that was what was nice about Charlotte. Like it was kind of like you got to talk to everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't super crowded. Um, but then again, that means attendance down, so – I don't know. Pick your battle. Yeah. I they bet. felt like quality, like customers that had done exactly. their research already. They had come to talk to us. They had heard of us. Like a lot of the other shows, there are people that are like, what do you do? What is this? Yeah. Or whatever. You know, and these people were like, I'm looking at you and X brand and like, what do you have to offer? Yeah. Well, I felt that if people were, I don't want to say risk coming out, but I can't think of another yeah, I guess I guess that's the best way to say it. If they were risking to come out, risking, you're the pretty cooties, serious. Yeah, then they're pretty ser serious about buying yeah, about buying a machine. And I mean, we were all masked. Um, I didn't see anybody get chased out because they weren't adhering to the rules. Yeah. But like Sarah said, it was really good. the 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 quality of the customers was as good as any show I've been to in a while. Um, and we did get to, you know, spend time with them, show them the machines. We had a B-Net set up there, our mm -hmm. new networking. Yeah, that was... That got a lot of uh, attention. Mm -hmm. Is that happening in Atlantic City? Too? It is right. happening okay. in Atlantic City. Absolutely. I spoke to Thaddeus this morning, and he reminded me to tell you to get him a hotel room. Okay. All right, I can do that for Thad. Right. If the hotel rooms ever open up. They ever open up. Yeah. Are they not open yet? No. It's very strange they haven't opened yet. That's got me a little concerned, but... Well, we've got a nice monitor for it and some yep. sort of antenna device, so... Oh, you mean for the B-Net? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what all that stuff is. I don't either. That I brought is, it in. I was like, has oh, has to, has can we to hang this up and watch Netflix? No. All right. Anything else about the show that was oh, outstanding? Oh, yeah. James Timmons sent us a lovely um, design that he digitized. 
Uh, it was a dragon. It said Baradin. It had mm-hmm. like a huge sky filled with stitches. It was really cool. We don't have that here to show. I get. We don't have any, do we? No, we we could so. not keep samples. Yeah, we had to hide them. I mean, it was a phenomenal design. The detail that was in it. It was cool. It, it was really nice. And we've got another. We're going to sew that one. I'm thinking. I think we're going to sew that one and another, the big circle dragon that I had to get a hoop for. Oh, the, the, one, okay. that, the one we were yep. working on. So James will have two dragons <laughs> <laughs> at, at the. Uh, if Atlantic you want to know City how to show. train a dragon, talk to James. Talk Timmons. to James, but he yeah. did such a good job on both of those. And so we're going to give his uh, <clears throat> yeah. his, um, his digitizing uh, side hustle. Is it a side hustle? He's a Wilcom employee. No, he, I mean he does some stuff. You know, after after hours. Yeah, he's he's really good. I've that's what a side hustle is. He's Am I wrong? Uh, okay, well, yeah, I guess it's true. Yeah. So it's. <laughs> so his email address, if you are looking for digitizing services, is JTWorks. Or JTWorks. JTWorks. <laughs> Had to, James. 2013 at gmail.com. Yeah. And we, we've got to get James on the podcast. He's a s- sweetheart of a guy. I mean, I love him to death. He's a good friend of mine. I, we text just about every day, literally just about every day. And uh, Yeah, he sends you uh, like a... Bible verse yeah, today. inspirational stuff, and I, I really appreciate that, man. When I'm feeling down, he kind of lifts me up a little bit, and uh, I, you know, a lot. I've got friends, but he's just a dear, dear friend, and I always cool. look forward to seeing him. So, anyway, James, I'm looking forward to see James for, works. Maybe James. we can get him up to Atlantic City. I'll talk to Greg because customers love him. He's yeah. There were people asking um, if he was going <clears> to <throat> be at the booth um, when you guys were in hmm. Long Beach. Yeah, I don't know if he was scheduled to go to that show. You know, Wilcom did not. They canceled out yeah, at yeah. the last minute, and they had a booth there. I, I mean, yeah. it was, wasn't was far. It was, what, an aisle, an aisle over from us. Um, I can't remember if he said he was going or not. Uh, I, but anyway, um, hopefully he'll be in Atlantic City. Yeah, so. that'd be nice. I wanna, I'd like to meet him. Oh, you haven't met him? No. I've, oh. I send people his way all the time, but I think it was the Fort Worth show that I that's met the first time him. you yeah. met him. And yeah, I, I work shows with him. He usually goes to Canada and does a seminar um, in the Mississauga office, uh, our office, and he will come and do a will come seminar just about whenever we have shows up there. So, um, yeah, he's a good teacher, digitizer. Um, he knows the software in and out. If I get stuck on something in will come, I'll text him or send him a email or call him, and he'll. He walked me through it. So yeah. he is the, uh, what did you say, that guy? We were just talking about this guy that was the Baird and Master. Oh, yeah. Well, James is the Wilcom Master. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a Baird and Master and a Wilcom Master. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we'll have, we'll have both of his designs there, and then we'll sew caps, too. So it'll be fun. Yep, That shows March 24th through uh-huh. the 26th. Yeah. Dang, I'm and good. we are booth 319, unless that changes because they haven't released the floor plan. The floor plan. Yeah. I'll bet it changes. It, it probably might, yeah. does. I know they, we'll they told there. us about where we would be, right in the center. Yeah. And we have no idea how big that show is going to be. It so was really we, small last year. Hopefully it's bigger this year. Yeah. But again, it was good. Yeah. yeah. And we probably should say that yeah. Atlanta, the Impressions Atlanta show is officially canceled. Um, yeah. We didn't do it. So no. calm down. <laughs> No, we were going to. We were. Gonna I got fussed at last week. Yeah, like I'm anybody. So I didn't do it, but it ain't happening. Yeah, that show is May fifth through the seventh. We planned on going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, they're just not having it this year. Yeah, so. hopefully, hopefully that'll be the word on the street is there will be an Atlanta show sometime in the future. I don't, know, I don't know that it'll be this year, but it should come back around. So yeah, it's not going to be this year from no. what they what yeah. they said. So, um, but. Yeah, we haven't had a show in Atlanta in a long, long time. It's probably been fifteen years or so since we've had one. No, no, we no. I'll, I'll take that back. We had the. Uh, oh, I can't think of her name. Oh, you know the show I'm talking about. Is it te- Textile? Well, that one, we don't <laughs> go to that. Well, we were thinking about going, but that's kind of an international show. Um. And and. E- NNEP, oh, yeah. National Network of Embroidered Professionals. Um, oh. Jennifer Cox. That's it. Sorry, yes. Jennifer, if, yeah. you, if you're yeah. listening. And we need to get Jennifer on the podcast. She's She'd be a good person to talk to. Yeah, I to. listened to her on, on one. Yeah. I don't know. It was probably Well, a I had called her, and she wanted to, and then she said she had something else to do. Um, but I need to call her. We need to get her scheduled. She's 
been in the industry a long time, and she has some really good insight uh, on the embroidery industry. So uh, I need to give her a call. Get her on here. That's our show updates. Nope. Now no. we do no. one more impression show. Oh, we have one more show to talk I'm sorry. about. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm a conductor of this train. <laughs> choo choo. So you you went <laughs> to the. I did it earlier. New North America. <laughs> no. New England. What? New England? Northeast. Northeast. Okay. Expo. 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 Yeah. Put on by... Alpha Broder. Alpha Broder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How was it? That's oh. an invite-only show, correct? Yes. It's... Um, there aren't but two machine vendors. Um, obviously, we're one of them. Um, one supply company... It's really small. It's a lot of um, apparel, more apparel than anything. Yeah, because Alpha Broder owns like a yeah. bunch of apparel. All, all, all of yeah. them. But uh, all we've, done that, we've done that show for years, and it's it's really a good little show. It's by invitation only, and In it was very good. In Connecticut. Foxwoods Resort and Casino. Nope, I didn't gamble, but... Vinny was there. But Vinny you won was there. big anyway. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> Vinny was there. I was a winner. I will tell you a little story real quickly. Um, Sean Evans. No, him. He was coming with uh, CIT Finance, and he was bringing a drill and some tools. Well, unfortunately, his mother fell ill, and he had to take care of her the day that we were going to uh, I didn't know set this. up. Oh, did I tell you? I I didn't understand the implication of that, but I did see that he had to reschedule his room. Yes, yeah. and I had no tools. I had the bare minimum. Well, you, you had the biggest mm. tool that I know. Vinny Ecarino. <laughs> well, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Um, just Sean kidding. was going to bring his his drill, so I didn't have to pack all that stuff. It's it's, it's a ton of stuff to pack. You know, uh, I got a little tool bag, but I didn't want to take all that stuff, so I took a separate suitcase uh, to put some tools in. Just to set up the machine. Sean was bringing a drill, power strip, a couple other things. And he calls me. I, I get there about 1 o'clock. And he calls me and said, hey, I'm not going to make it. And, and he told me, you know, I, I, I understand. And I said, hey, dude, go take care of your mom. And I said, man, what am I going to do? So I Googled. I took my cellular, device. my cellular phone and found a hardware store about six miles away and ended up buying $100 worth of tools, hammer, pry oh, bar, man. Crescent wrench, ratchet, wow. just to get. So, and I got to hand it to Vincent. I give Vincent a hard time for two reasons. Number one, he deserves it. Mm-hmm. Number two, great salesperson. Not much when it comes to the machine side of things. <laughs> but he did take a, a little crescent wrench. I gave him the smallest tool so he wouldn't hurt himself or anyone else. Yeah, nothing sharp either. And we took, we eat every one of those bolts. You've done this, Sarah. Mm-hmm. We took them yeah. out by hand. No, no power tools. We yeah. did like the cavemen when the cavemen used to yeah. embroider, embroider, <laughs> yeah. and open up their machines in the crate. They didn't have electricity. Yeah, but they, well, hey, you good, know, good for you. What you got to do now. The only thing was, um, Vinny has a hard time working and talking at the same time. Oh, I'm sure. So, for every three bolts I did, Vinny did one. Yeah. But and then told you a story about a time that yeah. he remembered something about a bolt. A bolt, yeah. <laughs> the funniest thing was, you you've uncreated a machine. Mm-hmm. You have too. You know, there's bolts on the top and on one side. So we get them all off the top, and going to take the top off of it. So I start the bolts on the front. He goes around the back, and he's got his crescent wrench, and he said, "Where are the bolts?" I said, "What what bolts are you talking about?" He said, "The ones in the back." I said, do you see any? He said, no. I said, maybe they didn't, they forgot to put them in there. <laughs> Those crazy Japanese at Bearden, they didn't put the bolts in the machine. I said, Vincent, it's nailed. He said, well, how are we going to get those out? I'm like, dude, let's just get these out. And that's what I got the rest, a hammer. The rest I got will take pry, care of itself. Pry bar. And we'll get this thing out of here. Anyway, he was a, he was a huge, he was really a huge help. And he's always com- comic relief. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, he's, he's and I heard one hand. of his stories that I've heard for the thirteenth time. I can almost tell it back to him. Anyway, long story short, um, show was really good. Got to see a lot of our um, current customers. 
Um, that show too, um, the customers that came, a lot of them were looking for embroidery machines. So, yeah, I mean, I hope that's the pattern that goes all year mm-hmm. since shows are, are getting underway is that, uh, you know, customers are coming to buy instead of just look and, you know, ask you how that's, how that's done. That's fine. We'll explain anything. But, you know, we spend a lot of money on these shows. So it's nice to have an audience that is interested in, in, uh, in the embroidery industry and, and, you know, that wants to make a purchase at some point. So, oh, and I, I survived. Uh, I got out of town before the big snowfall came. Thank you, American Airlines. Garrett, thank you, Garrett. Garrett. You answered the phone after 37 minutes on hold Jeez. and got my ticket changed. Nice job, Garrett. Yeah, Garrett did good. Big shout out to Garrett. His name That's, was Garrett. That just makes me, uh, makes my palms sweat thinking about it. Yeah. Being stuck in an airport. I don't, well, I hate him. I had canceled my room. I turned my rental car in early. And I'm thinking, man, do I just head out of town in a rental car mm. and let the police chase me like a Smokey and a Bandit thing? Because <laughs> I'm supposed to turn it in. Anyway, yeah, I, I got back home. <laughs> I got. I drove up from <clears throat> Fox. Foxwoods is in a town called Mashantucket or Mashantucket or something. I don't know. It's a <laughs> Mash, it's Mash old Indian knuckles. name. <laughs> and uh, it poured the snow from there up to Hartford. And then when I got to the airport, it stopped. So got on my flight, landed in Charlotte, go to my truck, head out of the parking deck. Guess what? Snow. Pour in the snow. Yeah. All the way up the road. Then it turned into rain. Yeah, but we we uh we got a little it wasn't bad. A little dusting. A little dusting. Two yeah. inches. Yeah. Okay. Two inches thick powder. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, weather man. <laughs> it's still in my backyard. It hasn't melted yet. Yeah. I'm the sun never still- shines in my backyard. Oh, man, I think our camera died. It did. Oh, no. I think that memory card's full. Hmm. We should pause. Pause it. Well, we had a mishap in the studio. A snafu. And we're yeah, back. We're back. Sorry. Most of you won't know this happened. Some of you will. Enjoy. All right, recap. <laughs> the show's done. <laughs> show's are done. Yeah. For now. Well... The next one. Oh, we already talked about Atlantic City. Yeah, yeah Atlantic we did. City okay, is next. Be there, be squad. All right, next we're gonna do a little product review slash introduction. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, this was talked about on the uh, podcast with Nancy from yes. Adira. She mentioned the Needleys, which is a Harry Potter looking wand. Is it? Okay. I think so. I haven't watched them. It, it looks like a probe like, to me. Yeah. Um, you got to check your tur- temperature of your turkey. So, Jerry Lee, <laughs> I'm just, go, I'm glazing over what you said. It's like, just keep going. Yeah, I'm rolling I'm with just it. saying what it looks like. I think you're high. <laughs> Jerry Lee Medeiros, Medeiros. Mm-hmm. I hope uh, I got your name right. Did you talk Did you talk to her in Long Beach? I don't think so. Yeah, I did. I met her. Very nice. Very yeah. nice lady. Well, I've seen this thing many times on the Madeiras site and then the Embroidery Nerd page. Um which we, Which we met him in Long yeah. Beach. Yeah, <coughs> Jeff yeah. Fuller. Yeah. Um, what's that? Super friendly. Yeah, yeah. He seems like a really nice guy. I haven't yeah. met him, but... Did um, I meet him? I don't know. I don't remember. Anyway, she, what I was saying is she she was live streaming mm-hmm. that on her page. And she is the... She didn't create this, but she sells it, right? Is that correct? Her... I didn't um, do the research that I should have. Yeah. I yeah, thought her... I think she bought the... Like licensed to yeah something. because it, it had been around for a while according to the the story and kind of sat on a shelf and then mm-hmm. um, it looks like they brought it back into production so what's the name of the company what was it Sun Sunfacer Manufacturing and Supply? yes that's it mm-hmm. yeah so they make this cool product called the Needleys which makes getting your needle lined up when you're putting a needle into your machine very very easily yeah that's the name Needleys. Um, so kind of the, I won't say controversy, but I guess the issue was folks with Baird and were having a little bit of trouble using the product because of the pigtail that's on there that kind of holds the thread in place. Um, I used it today and it's very easy and I think we're going to do a video on it. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll do a video on it to show you guys. Yeah, because it, it is a little different using it on a Baird versus other machines um, from what I understand. So um, yeah, I think we've figured it out. So um 
Um, yeah, we'll do a little video clip of it so you can see it. But a really cool product. It keeps the the needle straight in line. So if you're holding this thing, I'll try to zoom in on this. But um, if you're holding it straight in, that's your needle is facing the correct way, which I have a problem doing. Well, the other thing too is when you put the needle in there, you rotate the needle till it clicks. Yes, yeah, the and that groove. Way you know, yeah. my my issue with uh, replacing a needle is getting it in backwards. That's what I'm saying. You, I do I, it. Nine, I can't I, find the groove. I, I can't see. I can't see anymore. The, I, you know, even when I was trying to put it, I can't even see to put it in this thing. That's how blind I am. But, but yeah, you don't there's have a, to. But yeah, you, don't. you can feel it. Yeah. yeah, and it clicks into place. So the, there's a piston system in here. So whenever it hits that groove, it locks into place, and that's the front of your needle. So mm-hmm. when you go to put this in there. You don't have to think about it. And really cool product. So, um, yeah. And she sent it to us, um, you know, free to yeah, try. So thank and, you. Uh, Seriously. So far, I tried it. I liked it. Brandon yeah. did it. Yeah, uh, I've been Sarah, using it. We're going to let Sarah try it. We have to get the Sarah test on it. Yeah. She is the. You know. Yeah. She may stab us with it and say, I don't like this thing. Just kidding. Uh, really cool. Um, no, it's, it's, I'm, because you know, I, I can't believe I don't. I didn't know this thing existed. Well, I've seen it. Um, I saw it on, when we were talking to Nancy on that podcast, like I went on there and saw it, but I'd never physically held it to my hands. Well, saw it's, its power. It's, it's uh, very quality. It's machined. Yeah. That it looks like aluminum. It's made in the USA, it too. Solid. So, yeah. How about them apples? Yeah. So cool. Because um, you know, if you're, you're trying to put a needle in, it's like a two-handed process. Like you got to make sure you've got it turned the right way, then mm-hmm. your screwdriver. Yeah, it. it takes the uh the guesswork out of making sure it's in there correctly i wonder if that would go through security on a on a plane on a, uh, at tsa good question they might they might think it's a weapon anything's a weapon yeah. these these are weapons do they go through security <laughs> yeah i usually have to get a cavity search <laughs> but no big deal been there before okay so yeah so check that you. out and then look for a video we'll do we'll do a video on it yeah and, we will. um and thank you for sending that to us we really appreciate it jerry yep so speaking of making Uh-oh. things easier more efficient Ooh, wow. our segue. What a segue. Segue? yeah our segue um into five tips to make your embroidery more efficient yes these are quick and dirty um we feel like um just some easy things you can do just to make things much smoother in your production yeah things to consider if you're not yep. already and these are in no particular order. I thought they were. No, it's just kind of the way they were written down. Yeah. All right, so number one, we'll do uh, keeping your most used colors on needles 6 through 10. Or 6 through 11. Yeah, however math works. Yeah. Yep. I so wouldn't what, get the math part. What would be the reasoning for that? Well, <clears throat> to keep your machine, you don't, if you have like white on needle number one and black on number 15, it has to go all the way Two, three, four, five. All and your way color down, changes. Your color changes. And is, is that a big deal? No. But the thing about production embroidery is, and even if you know just a small shop with a single head, you want to produce as many pieces as possible. So those seconds that you save at the end of the day add up to minutes. Minutes or money. Minutes add up to money. Hours. Oh, that's how that works. Hours add up to days. Oh, my God. So, anyway, that's one way to be more productive is keep your basic colors in the center. Efficiency. Especially your, your, your black and your white. You're always going to have black and white on your machine, always. And probably, you know, four, five, six other basic colors that you use quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Keep <clears> those <throat> in the center on needles 6 to 11. Use the outer needles for your custom colors. Or you can move, you know, if you're running a big job, let's say you're running 200 pieces, and you just move your thread around to where your, your uh, needle changes are mid- minimal, That'll help you be more productive. Yeah. So that's that's one. And it does work. It really does. Yeah. Even as fast as these machines, you know, we went to a high-speed color change about three or four years ago, and it's amazing how fast they change colors. But still yet, to go from one needle to the next, it's, it's like still, a split second. Yeah, it's still a mechanical process that mm-hmm. has to take place. You're, you're shaving off milliseconds. Again, Absolutely. We did the math for you. Milliseconds. And then, and then, yeah, get it. Yep. All right. It does add up. Yeah, guys. it does. That's how, that's how it works. Thanks, science. Number two, keep your backings pre-cut or order pre-cut backings. <clears throat> now, this, there's controversy with this because... I love it. The drama. Yes, there's always drama in life. But and especially in embroidery. <laughs> and embroidery <laughs> drama is the worst kind. <laughs> that's worse than marital drama, is embroidery drama. 
That's what they say. That's I trust me. I know. I know both. I've been I've been doing both I've a got long both. time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a tangent and a half, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Focus. um, the controversy is yes, you can save money by buying bulk. There's no doubt about that. But you have to cut your backing. And there's an argument. People say, well, I can cut it to exact size, not have any waste. Ba- pre-cut pieces aren't that much more expensive. But if you keep the pre-cut sheets for the size that you need, you know, not for everything, but for the bulk of watch, you know, 12 and 15 centimeter maybe, um, you know, may- maybe 18 or 21. J- jacket backs I would probably cut because you're not going to it, – it's hard to find a jacket back piece. Well, it's not hard. It just – it's just better to cut your jacket back piece, in my opinion, because not every these they, they can't cut a, a jacket back piece for every. It's not a universal thing, right? For every machine, jacket back hoop, right? Does, does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, I'm not explaining that very good. I feel like I'm having. It's a not universal. Like it's, it's going to vary not. across so manufacturers. Those, but hoop. for your, you know, your twelves and your fifteens and your round hoops, even your square, your your four four and a quarter, five and a half, seven point two five mighty hoops. Get the you know get the pre-cut backing, keep it stacked up there, and when you're doing your you know you're, you're hooping or you're framing, you've got it right there at hand. You're not taking scissors and having to pre-cut everything and prep. Mm-hmm. So that's because guess who gets cut. to do those at shows? I do. Sarah is the best foam cutter, the best. We cut a bunch in Atlantic City too. Like but she, we just she, got in. She a, cuts a straight line. I can't. I'm, I wasn't very good at it either. Anyway, yeah, it'll save you time doing that too. Which. Yeah. Time. Remember how it works? Time. Yeah. Yep. Number three. Uh, this is one that I don't think is utilized enough, and it's dedicating one or two needles on your machine for maybe small lettering, maybe, um, you know, a 65, nine needle uh, for your small lettering, and maybe 60 weight thread on just one or two. Which, if you were at the show in Atlantic City... That scroll, Mm -hmm. that's what that was on. In Atlantic City? You know where you were. (laughs) (laughs) When you're in Atlantic City, are we saw that there? Yeah, right? Yes, we will. Okay. On the XL2? We'll do it on the XL2. Yes, we're going to have a CO1. Yeah, we can do the the other dragon on that one. Yeah. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Anyway, if you were at Long Beach. Yeah, that design is a hit. There are a lot of yep. people that stopped and I saw some comments on that questions. too. That was yeah. like, "Oh, what was this done on?" Yeah. You know what it was done on. <laughs> 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 anyway, <laughs> but if you want to get crisp or small lettering, uh-huh. um, no matter what machine you have, I mean, try sixty weight thread and try a smaller needle, and just keep you know, if just keep one um, needle. Maybe one uh, needle number one or needle needle number fifteen um, for your small letter, and it'll make it look better. Yeah. Um, and that, go back and listen to that other podcast with Nancy too, because um, yeah. she had a lot of really good tips in there. Um, yeah. Good or resource. If you want, and on the on the other hand too, on the flip side, if you do a lot of caps, especially the the Richardson caps or the stiffer, you know, structured uh, cap. Structured cap uh, you could use a you know a larger needle like an eighty twelve uh, for your caps. So you know you don't have to have all seventy five elevens on your machine and all forty weight thread. You know, set it up, customize your needles needles a little bit. Um, you know, on what you're sewing, and and just make life a little bit easier for you. And if you keep those small needles in there and use your needleies, eh, good plug. There you go. Change those needles. You're you're already set up for it. So, and some people don't want to change the needles because it's a pain. Mm-hmm. But it's this will make it easier. That'll make it easier. Yeah. I like that thing. We'll have to get some more of those. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I'm a fan. I hope I like this. This is a tangent. I like this color scheme. I noticed the ones on the Madeira page were like black. Yeah. I wonder if we, you know what? Maybe if we could. Yes, I know what you're thinking. Yes, we mm, can. Personalized. Oh. Yep. You want one with Brandon, one with well, Sarah. I was thinking that. I was just thinking Barry and Blue. Tip number four. Um, How about thinking about a network? Yes. <laughs> so this is, um, well, I, I'm not going to say too much. I don't know what to say and what I can't say. 
Think about networking your machines versus <laughs> USB. I'm thinking think about all this. Yeah, he's hinting towards something in the future that yeah, we, I, is not available yet. Yeah. Right. Yeah, don't be, don't be doing that. I, that's don't, what don't you hint. think I just did. I hit the yeah. brakes. Yeah. The doctor pulled I'll, the brakes. I, I was going to kick you under the table. That's I shut my mouth. Yeah. Okay. No, you did good. You did, you did good. Yeah. Um, yes. Networking. We have um, designed file server for the older machines that network uh, via COM port. Uh, the newer machines, it's Workgroup 10. And if you're still carrying around the USB sticks, or even if you have an older machine and you're carrying around a CF card, um, networking is so much, so much easier. Um, you know, you can send designs to the machine from a, a laptop or a computer or a terminal. You know, you can load up designs in the queue for each machine, your jobs. Um, you can even look at based on colors. You know, if, you, if, if one machine's got the colors you need for a particular design, you could put designs in the queue for that machine and vice versa for the other one. But um, even though USBs are very fast, you still have to go and put that uh, design on the memory stick. Then you have to walk it to the machine, put it into the machine, pull it up, um, pull up a folder, download the design into the machine. If you're at a terminal and you're setting designs, it's just a push of a couple buttons. So, And not to mention, too, that those uh, USB cards can go, or USB sticks can go bad, or some just don't work that great. Yeah, I've, I've had a couple yeah, here lately. Yeah, there's some that funky. I've had, I've had I fussed with a couple, and I just, I, one, I washed up in the washing machine. It still works, in my pants, And it's probably the best one I have. I cleaned, I cleaned the files is what I did. did. I left it in my jeans, and my wife threw them in the wash yeah. and dried them. And it works, works great. Works <laughs> awesome. Best ever. But you cannot wash. You're probably not going to wash a laptop or a desktop. So probably not. The maybe it, maybe it's something. Right. You think people have washed their cell phone? Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. Guaranteed it. But you wouldn't wash a computer. You wouldn't take your laptop and throw it in there. No. So that's not how you clean your files, people. I'm not an IT guy, but I know that much. Yeah. So think about that. Look at networking. Um, might make your life easier, quicker, more efficient. That's what we're talking about. Right. All right, number five, last but not least, um, scrutinize your designs. Do what? Scrutinize. Scrutinize. Is that what I said? <laughs> said scrutinize. Strudel, strudelize <laughs> your design. Scrutinize. Did I really say that? I think it, it was sounded Moralon. like it. Morlon, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> Check out your designs. <laughs> Well, you know, a, lot, Words are a hard. lot of times we'll have a design digitized and it will come back and it may sew fine, which is what we want, but it may not sew for production. And let me explain what I mean by that. Um, ideally, and you can't always do this, ideally you want to sew as, um, one color as much as you can. Like if you've got a five-color design and you've got red, white, blue, black, and green, you want to sew all the green, then the blue, and the black, if you can. You can't always do that. Uh, you want to minimize the trims and minimize the color changes. Yep. Um, I've seen designs, and you guys have too, that sew, then cut, and sew, and they just have no flow to them. Yeah. And they're horrible for production. Um, watch how your designs sew. I mean, even when you get a design in your software, most softwares have what's called a controlled redraw yep. where you can watch it watch so it on so the screen uh, and you digitally. can speed it up and slow it down. But just see how the design is built. Well, I call it built. You know, how it was put together. Is it put together to where it'll sew as efficiently as possible? Um, I could talk about this for probably 45 minutes, but it should have a flow to it. It should have minimal cuts. It should have minimal color changes when at all possible. Your lettering... Use close closest point connection when you can. Mm -hmm. I, know, down I, know, I know some sometimes you have to trim between each letter, and that really slows your machine down when it has to stop and cut. So a letter, stop and cut. You know, and you can't when if you look at a design um, with the lettering that way, you you can't really tell those connection points. I mean, it's not an obvious thing. If they're close enough, you can't. Right. Um, you know, it used to be years ago when, when digitizing software or keyboard lettering first came out when you when people were doing it, the the connection point was at the bottom and it always looked like it looks like there a was line. a line going yeah. through there. So when they came up with what's called closest point connection, like if you have an S and the next letter is an E, instead of connecting at the bottom, it may jump a cross in the curve of that S over to that the E and your eye doesn't follow letter. that. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's in a different place every time, 
and and you, you don't follow that line. It's almost invisible to the eye. Yeah, we're, if it's at that as bottom, a human, you're, going to, you're 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 drawn to it. We we recognize patterns in the world. Mm-hmm. That's biology. So Psychology. is that biology? Mm-hmm. It's biology. All right. Is it? It's, it's, called fib, it's called the Fibonacci sequence. You notice patterns in the world, things that happen. I, I, I can't challenge him because I don't know you, what he's talking about. No, I'm, I'm telling you, there are certain patterns <laughs> that happen. Yeah, I'm, I, I think promise I you. had that in an Italian restaurant. You did. Fibonacci with clams. It's good, isn't it? It's delicious. Is it white sauce or red on the Fibonacci? It's whatever you choose. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> anyway, maybe a little olive oil and butter. When something looks weird, your your eye catches it. So that when they did that, so prior, you're I, you would be considered yes, a Fibonacci. Yes, that's why I stick out. I'm odd. You're fibbing. No. Okay. I just learned. Just look it up. Google uh, it. When this is over with, I'm looking that up. Look it up. You'll see. You'll be like, man, he was right. He really isn't well, stupid. Well, that's the like, is that the round? It's that. Yeah. Like, that, like, that is a Fibonacci sequence, oh, like a seashell. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. There's yeah. these certain uh-huh. repeating patterns in nature and the universe that exist. That's what that's called. Yeah. Fibonacci I, you know what sequence. I call it a coincidence. Well, it's really not. <laughs> it's the evidence of a higher power. <laughs> Fibonacci. Yeah. You know, I'm I consider myself above average intelligence. Mm-hmm. I know things that are just dumb, so random Jeopardy information. All right. Yeah, good tips. <laughs> <laughs> well, and make sure your designs are fibonacci Yeah. Right? Or not. Or not fibonacci You don't want it to be an obvious pattern. Pattern. Like anti Fibonacci. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying that. <laughs> All right. Any anything else? Any any more hot tips? I think those are good. Um, those are pretty good. That's okay. kind of boil down to and um, a lot of you might say, "Well, that's that's you know that's common knowledge." But common it, knowledge ain't it, so common. It's well, it's not only that, but I think that as embroiderers, we do things a particular way, and we get a design back, especially the one. I I kind of talk about this a lot with people, and I, and I've seen designs. You and I will sew designs, and Sarah, we've sewn designs for customers. And you watch it so. Oh, like, yes. I can't yeah. remember what it was now. I, I was remember, thinking about that too. And I'm like, that there I, I, was something so glaringly. It was like the trims were so unnecessary yeah. in that design. Yeah. And it's it's like it. You or could, or it'll go like it'll sew a, a centimeter of a black whatever it's going to be, and then it jumps to red. Yeah. And there's not a there's no flow at all to it, or right. it doesn't even start in the right place. Exactly. So, but it's stuff that you might not realize that you that you know i mean if you sit there and watch things so enough you see it i'll tell you where people get in trouble a lot i see this all the time is they'll take a left chest embroidery and put it on a hat yeah and it's just going to sew differently on a hat you have to go from the bill up always and up and out you're always you're always wanting to push that material away from the center and and everything that's pretty much a rule of embroidery but there's some things you can get away with on a shirt that you can't on a cap and they'll take a poorly designed a poorly digitized designed design did i say that right you said design three times so i think so <laughs> it's the fibonacci <laughs> coming out and it may so great on that shirt but you put it on the cap and then you're starting you're going to start having puckering and mm-hmm. issues and people say well you know there's something wrong with my machine not necessarily it, a lot of times it could be the the design and i don't think enough attention is paid to um the proper digitizing or the flow or the pattern or the way the design is built. And back when I was digitizing, I always, that was the first thing I looked at was how to, how do I, you look at it and you wonder how, how do I build this to where it sews as efficiently as possible? And it's hard to do sometimes. It's yeah, hard and to what's build it going on too? Like what is it going on? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I know everybody's farming out their digitizing now or the, the biggest, um, most embroiderers are, which I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but it may look good. It may look great, but is it really digitized for production? Mm-hmm. I, I know um, there used to be a digitizer. I can't think of her name. She, even when, when I first started, there was no trimmers on machines. You know, you had to clip every thread. And when you digitized back then, um, you didn't put cuts in, you know, you put color changes in it or a stop, but you didn't put cuts in. When trimmers came out on the machines, um, a lot of the older embroiders would not use them. They would actually go in and turn them off because the machine would stop 
tram and start back up again, especially people that had multi-head machines. And in QC, they would cut the backing and they would snip the threads. That sounds horrible. I, it, it, well, you got to you got to think. You're, I don't want you, to. You, you guys see the machines now like they trim, but before they had to slow down, stop. The the trimming mechanisms were very slow. Start back up. So if you're thinking on a multi head machine, I'm talking a twelve or fifteen head machine. If it did that on a design, let's say twenty times in a pattern, in a yeah. design, at the end of the day, you're Fibonacci. Yeah. <laughs> my, new, my new favorite word. <laughs> I'm sorry, I blew your mind. No, I'd like it to expand to my horizons, my vocabulary. Yeah. yeah. I Somebody just, I'm just that. trying to think if how I can use that word in front of my wife. Maybe and not, don't. And not Maybe get don't, do that. don't do that. I know her. She'll hit you. She'll say you've been hanging around Brandon. Yeah, that yeah, that's probably yeah. her first statement. All right. Well, that's uh, that'll wrap up this episode. Um, I'm not going to do it. Go ahead. Do it. Let's hear it. Uh-uh. What? No, I try, I try to think. I talked about this last time. I can't think about the future like no, this is we, happening. We, we, let's stop doing that. I know. We, we don't got need, to. We need to do that. I can't. It's like I, in my I nature. This. We're, we're, late, we're late. It will come out on time. <laughs> See, you're, you're doing nope, it. You said I'm don't not, do it. I am not. <laughs> no. But I, I, Sarah and I was up. We were out of town the week before last. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was we out of town out most right of out. last week. Right mm-hmm. after I came, I came back and went up to uh, the snow country. It'll be out. We got this. Yeah. We're good. Well, you do. Yeah. Sarah and I already did our job. Yeah, I know. Thanks a lot. All right. Appreciate you guys subscribing, yeah, liking. thank you for listening. Thank Every you other Wednesday. Yep. Yeah, honestly, thank you. Thank you for the comments. Um, it, was, it was very humbling in Long Beach to hear the, all the people. It's so nice to meet people. It is. It, 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 you know, I don't need a pat on the back. But go ahead. But I'm going, I'm, <laughs> but it does, it does feel, I can't pat myself on the back. I can't get my arms He's got arthritis. There. I do. But it, it's nice to know that people are, are listening. I mean, we, we, we do this because it's fun and we feel that we're, giving out some information, letting you know a little bit about Baird and, um, and we want to, you know, provide some good content, but it's nice to hear as many people that are listening that are listening. <laughs> <laughs> I feel not you that, didn't I? Yeah, I, did. I did. I saw it coming. I saw Jeez. the patterns. Hey, like, if you didn't learn anything else today, you know what a Fibonacci is. No, you don't. No, you need you to look don't. it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just, I opened the door. I'll show you the door. You got to walk through the door. That's from the matrix. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I watched that yesterday. All right, everybody had a, have a great rest of your day. Thanks for listening. Thank Thanks you. for subscribing. Please comment, subscribe. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your wife, tell your kids, tell your spouse, tell everybody else. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Namaste. Bye.